Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, here with some post-fight comments on Alexander Povetkin's win over Marco Hawk. Now first, let's talk about who won the fight. I understand there are many, in fact, all of the commentators on EPEX who believe that Marco Hawk won this fight. I don't. I admit that I did not see the first four rounds live. I actually caught the fight in the fifth round. But from the fifth round to the twelfth round, I thought Alexander Povetkin systematically outworked and outthought Marco Huck. I gave him a slight edge based on the parts I saw. Then when I went back and I looked at the first four rounds, in my opinion, Alexander Povetkin won three of the first four rounds. Now, I believe, let's talk mechanics. I believe that boxing turns on um, just the wrinkles you put in for your opponent and your ability to adjust off those wrinkles. Only one of these fighters, in my opinion, could bend at the waist and keep his balance in the middle of a fight. And that was Alexander Povetkin, and I thought that was the wrinkle he threw in that was the most effective against Marco Huck. Because Marco Huck really is a great straight right hand and an uppercut in close, but he's really a great straight right hand wrapped around a cruiserweight who likes to bounce around and stay in front of you, right? So what Huck is trying to do, in my opinion, is to hit you with a straight right hand. It sets up everything else for him because then he likes to rush his opponents and turn it into a free-for-all. He'll, you know, not set up the punch like a true counter puncher would. We saw another fight with Adrian Broner where Broner is a technician. So Broner is literally trying to figure out patterns so he can throw a punch at a certain time. That's not Marco Huck. In my opinion, Marco Huck is more of an athletic guy who's standing in front of you with a nuclear weapon. He knows that if he lands that straight right hand flush, many men are going to hit the canvas. So he's just looking for an opening. And as soon as that opening comes, he'll then throw it, right? He's not a guy who, in my opinion, is adaptive reactive. He's not reading you and then trying to throw other punches to set up that straight right hand. So what I believe Povetkin's corner did is they understood he could only throw that straight right hand up top. Take a look at the tape. So what Povetkin does, and he does it throughout the fight, is when they're in close and it looks like Huck is trying to throw a straight right hand. Provetkin bends at the waist, puts his head parallel with his shoulder, right? He bends below the range of where Huck's straight right hand would be effective. And he doesn't have his hand up. Rather, he has his hand guarding against a Huck right uppercut. Right? This is what you hire trainers for. This is what Prevetkin does. And what Huck does in response shows you how limited Huck is, in a sense. And this was one of the best fights I've seen of Huck. Huck still threw that straight right hand. But he would throw it to the back of Prevetkin's head as Prevetkin bent at the waist forward. Right? Um, Huck, how do I put it? Huck wasn't the kind of fighter who saw that wrinkle, 
digested that wrinkle and then was able to faint and make adjustments to get around the wrinkle, right? If you know Povetkin is going to be ducking under your right hand, other fighters would have faked the punch to set up an uppercut and would have even faked the uppercut to get around the defensive guard, right? Other fighters, when Povetkin bends forward, wouldn't stay on top of him and throw rabbit punches that the referee should never have allowed. And there were several in this fight. Rather, other punchers would come forward and play games with distance. This is a Sergio Martinez trick. Play games with distance where if you're close to the guy, ready to hit him with the right hand, and the guy has it timed and has a defensive move, where he's ducking low, so you can't throw that right hand up top. A Martinez or a Juan Manuel Marquez would take a step back, right? Have the guy look foolish. Have the guy ducking for no reason. Take a step back, motion him, not even think about throw throwing that right hand until the situation presents itself. In other words, Marco Huck comes in, he has the right hand caught <clears throat> the entire fight. He's just trying to hit on a straight right hand. The entire fight, right? Other fighters would hide the punch. You know, they know they want to hit you with the right hand. A vast <clears throat> virus database has been But updated. they would literally pretend to be throwing lefts all night just so you start to worry about a punch that's inconsequential to them so they can then get close enough to then throw the right hand at the perfect opportunity. That's not Huck. So I thought that Prevetkin's ability <clears throat> to bend at the waist really stymied Huck's straight right hand. And without that straight right hand, Huck really isn't a dominant fighter. I thought that um, what was disappointing with Prevetkin is he also doesn't seem to make adjustments in the middle of fights. Let's just say I think the Klitschko's are pretty safe with both of these fighters. Because later in the fight, in particular, in the 12th round, Prevetkin gets hit flush with several long right hands. In other words, even with his defensive maneuver where he's ducking under the right hand and he's bent at the waist creating a little bit of space between himself and Marco Huck uh, who isn't the kind of fighter to circle and you know who goes straight back when he backs away right he's not gonna come around the side even with that maneuver it seemed to me that Alexander Povetkin inexplicably and I mentioned this in the pre-fight video has these defensive lapses where his mind wanders and then he gets hit with the other guy's best punch. So even with his plan to, you know, uh, duck under the right hand, he got hit repeatedly with straight right hands late in this fight, notably in the 12th round. Now he's lucky he has a great chin. He's also lucky he's a heavyweight who outweighed Huck by more than 20 pounds because if Huck lands that many straight rights late against a cruiserweight, Huck would have won this fight by KO, right? And so Povetkin really does have defensive lapses. If Huck was able to late in this fight, land as many straight right hands when that's really his primary weapon. Right? If Huck's able to land that many straight right hands, what happens if Provetkin faces Vladimir Klitschko, who's battering you with a left jab, and who, unlike Huck, is actually hiding that straight right hand behind an excellent jab? Right? He's doing what I talked about earlier. He's distracting you with an excellent punch, and that straight right hand is actually hidden, right? It's it's hidden as plan B 
when it's a plan A weapon. Here, Marco Huck isn't even packaging that long right hand, right? It's a bazooka, and he's just in there flashing it. He has a perfunctory jab, not that big, not going to bust you up like uh, Vladimir Klitschko's jab. Just look at Prevetkin's face after the fight. He's not busted up at all by any jab. And all Huck is in there doing is trying to show you his bazooka, right? And even then, he landed too many bazooka shots for my taste. And that was with Povetkin bending at the waist and avoiding most of the bazooka shots. And so uh, to sum up, I thought that if you look at the tape, it's Povetkin's ability to bend at the waist and bend under Huck's straight right hand that wins him the fight, as well as just better technical brilliance, right? Povetkin's able to step forward. He has a nice little combination where he throws the left to the body, then comes up top with it and hits you in the head. And Marco Huck, you know, stays in front of you. Right? The fight is basically Huck and Prevetkin standing in front of each other. Neither of them is really dancing around the ring. And when they stay in front of each other, the guy with the faster hands, the greater multiplicity of weapons, right? Um, you know, uh, Prevetkin has faster hands, throws combinations, right? He doesn't have a punch as good as Huck's straight right hand. But he throws more punches. He can hurt you with a left hook, right? He can throw a combination and in the middle of the combination hit you with body shots. He can dip his shoulder quickly and throw an uppercut in the middle of a combination. He has the better balance. Huck standing upright, Prevetkin is moving up and down. He can literally bend. He can make you pay. If you throw a punch and he catches it on his hand, he can literally then make you pay with a combination. I thought Prevetkin did enough of that to win the fight. I'm going to disagree with every commentator on Epex. I thought the decision was a good one. I personally thought Prevetkin won this fight by, let's say, three rounds. But I can't quibble with anyone who had the fight a draw like one judge did and who had the fight with the scores of the other two judges. I thought it was a fair, hard-fought win by Povetkin. Now, I'm hearing that Povetkin is claiming that he overlooked Huck. You know, as I said in my pre-fight video, at the beginning of his sixth round against Ruslan Chigayev, a southpaw. Povetkin inexplicably gets hit with several straight left hands. Ruslan Chigayev's big weapon, right? And I was wondering how a guy could be that deep into the fight and then start to get hit repeatedly with the other guy's money punch. Well, that's what happened here. And I hope Povetkin is honest with himself. He has defensive lapses, right? He's, he's a guy who, for whatever reason, I mean, the 12th round's jarring in this fight. For whatever reason. In fact, the early part of the 11th round is jarring. For whatever reason, you know, Povetkin's a guy who, even late in fights, when you would think that a technician, a Hopkins or a Mayweather, would, would literally have the other guy's primary weapon timed and would be having it hit shoulders and stuff like that. Povetkin literally plays the angle so badly that he's in line to get hit by Marco Huck's long straight right hand repeatedly late in this fight. He needs to talk with his corner and he needs to figure out why He's not making defensive adjustments in the fight and why he's getting defensively sloppier as the fight goes along. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here on YouTube. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for watching.